Coming up next on Making Moves, JTA partners with a local college to bring the autonomous vehicle experience to their campus and their classrooms. Several new road construction projects are ready to start around Jacksonville. Find out where. We'll tell you why there's now a fence surrounding the Rosa Parks Transit Station. Then we'll introduce you to the people responsible for keeping its replacement pristine and operating smoothly. I'm Bill Milnes. These stories and more right now on Making Moves. Hello and welcome to Making Moves. I'm Bill Milnes. Thanks for joining us today. We have another great show for you. Coming up, we'll tell you about some Jacksonville area neighborhoods who will soon be getting a roadway upgrade. Find out where and when construction will start. The Jacksonville Regional Transportation Center at La Villa has been open for two months now. We'll check in to see how things are going and we'll meet the folks who are responsible for keeping it looking new and running smooth. And we'll explain why JTA's former transit hub is now behind an aluminum fence. But we begin at FSCJ Cecil Field Campus in southwest Jacksonville, not far from the Jacksonville Equestrian Center off Normandy Boulevard. The Cecil Campus is where you will find the college's commercial driver's training program. Now things are about to get much more high tech. As Making Moves correspondent Brittany Donovan reports, JTA is adding a second autonomous vehicle test track at Cecil Field. And with it, a new AV curriculum that will bring this new technology directly into the college classroom. Right now, we're at FSCJ's Cecil Center, and this is where students typically practice to take a CDL exam. But if you take a look, you can see JTA's autonomous vehicle going through. Right now, we're standing in the brand new test track for JTA's Ultimate Urban Circulator. It's not something you see every day, an autonomous vehicle navigating curves on a college campus. But when JTA started looking for a new test track, partnering with FSCJ was a natural fit. So our partnership with FSCJ is kind of a three-prong approach. Um, our first is uh, the use of the Cecil Field testing grounds. JTA has been testing AVs for years as part of its Ultimate Urban Circulator program. Most recently, their autonomous shuttles have been transporting COVID-19 samples at Mayo Clinic. Now, JTA will be using FSCJ's commercial driver's license test track at Cecil Center. We're looking at uh, battery life. We're looking at user experience. We're looking at vehicle optics. So from the outside in, what do people see? How does the vehicle interact with the environment? How do the customers on the vehicle feel? Does it accelerate properly? Does it decelerate properly? Does it stop long enough at the stops? All those things we can test. The second part of the new partnership will bring autonomous vehicles to FSCJ campuses. They'll serve as shuttles for students and staff. We're really starting to work towards what are the infrastructure requirements, what type of vehicles are best suited for this type of environment and this type of agile program. You no, know, it only brings the attractiveness of leveraging innovative and bold technology to kind of help solve some sort of problem on their campus. Uh, but additionally, it kind of shows that FSCJ and the JTA have this partnership and kind of moving the needle forward and kind of bringing some of that industry perspective to FSCJ. Uh, to support, you know, to support the futures. JTA is also looking to the future of who will work on their fleet of autonomous vehicles. The Ultimate Urban Circulator, or U2C, will replace the Skyway in downtown Jacksonville and eventually expand into other areas of Northeast Florida. Any vehicle that's emerging technology, there's going to be a deficiency in a, in a workforce to supply services to those vehicles. So as electric vehicles, autonomous vehicles, as they start to become more mainstream, we need the service personnel to maintain those vehicles. And not only to maintain them and to do the work on them, but also to operate them. That's why JTA's innovation experts are working with FSCJ on a new autonomous vehicle curriculum for students. That is going to drive what the workforce is going to look like. So my hope is that as they start needing service technicians or people who can troubleshoot and or people who can kind of analyze what's happening within the vehicle from afar, then that's where the skill set's going to be important for our students and for the workforce going into the future. 
Its experience, FSCJ's Dean of Engineering and Industry says, is valuable across industries. The goal is ultimately not that, that our students get tied into uh, just one industry. For example, the automotive industry or, or what could become the, the autonomous vehicle industry. Uh, but they have portable skills. So that as one industry uh, goes down and another industry goes up, uh, they are still able to be productive citizens in the workforce and have advanced skills that they'll always be employable. While JTA continues its search for the right vehicle for the U2C and its Bay Street Innovation Corridor, these community leaders agree. It benefits the community and it benefits the region because then our trained, skilled workforce they stay, they live, and they work, and they contribute back to this community. So it's an effort of trying to keep our community here and they even attract others to come into the region. This partnership is another step in making Northeast Florida the premier hub for autonomous vehicles and testing. We look at this as an opportunity, and it's not just AVs. We're looking at retrofit vehicles. We're looking at autonomous buses. And so we believe, you know, uh, the sky's the limit as to where we can take this technology. On the west side, Brittany Donovan, JTA, Making Moves. You can see from Brittany's story why JTA is considered one of the leading transit agencies in the country for its innovative approach to autonomous technology. It is the only agency anywhere currently working on an elevated AV network. Its partnerships with the Mayo Clinic and now FSCJ have only served to strengthen its commitment to expanding technology and growing an educational foundation that will serve as a pipeline for the future. As Making Moves senior correspondent Eugene Lindsay reports, JTA proved that commitment once again by becoming the first ever U.S. Transit Authority to have its entire automation team become AV certified. So we're really excited to, to really bring the certification to the automation division. More specifically, we have roughly about 10 plus of our folks internally uh, that are trained to not only operate the vehicle in manual mode, but also and operate under full autonomy. Michael Feldman, director of JTA's U2C project, is beaming with pride to have his entire automation staff trained and certified to operate the latest in mass transportation technology. While these autonomous vehicles can seemingly do everything on their own, it actually takes the skills and expertise of certified operators to keep these AVs on course. So the Jacksonville Transportation Authority made an unprecedented decision to allow every member of the automation team the opportunity to become certified to operate autonomous vehicles. And all of them stepped up to the challenge. Ten members of the JTA Automation Division went through a rather intense three-day qualification process, making every member of the automation team qualified to manually operate an autonomous vehicle. We do think it's unprecedented to have you know, internal JTA folks really trained to operate the, you know, these type of sophisticated vehicles. Operating them is really only one component. The other component is how do they operate. So we've been able to bridge both of those gaps and bring those together to certify our internal team. Um, so we're really excited about it. Marcus Dixon was the first JTA staffer to be trained and certified to operate the AVs. Back in 2018, Dixon became the first Transit Authority employee in the country to be certified to operate an autonomous vehicle. I was trained to operate an easy mile vehicle a couple years ago. Um, that was a, like a couple weeks training with easy mile. And we had the easy mile vehicle for like, like nine months. And then we transitioned to the Navia vehicle. So I went through the uh, Navia training with uh, Navia. So they sent down some guys from, from uh, France to come train uh, three, three people to operate this vehicle myself and two other people from First Transit Operations. So with that training and a couple of years of operation under his belt, Dixon found himself at the forefront of getting his JTA colleagues up to speed. It was a process where I uh, really got them familiarized with the controller, went over the, uh, the vehicles, told them about the vehicle, um, operation, other control operations and how all the gadgets on our controller works manual operation of the vehicle, um, taught them how to operate the vehicle in autonomous mode, how to switch bike from manual operations to autonomous operations and automations. This is the steering here. So we just use this to go either left or right with the steering operation. This is the acceleration toggle here. So you just push it up, it 
tells you what direction the vehicle is going in. The overall certification process involved studying and understanding the technology to learn exactly what the AVs are capable of doing and also learning to manually maneuver the vehicle using an Xbox controller like this one. Nervous skepticism was a common thread among these newly minted operators. It was a bit nerve wracking at first, taking manual control of it and ensuring that we knew everything that we needed to know, the basis of knowledge that we needed to know to operate it. But the more comfortable I got with it, the more exciting it became. Each button on the, on the controller has a function and you gotta memorize it because when you're out there operating, you gotta be able to know if you have to take manual control, you gotta know the process on how to do it. Uh, so it was, it was a learning curve. You never know what you're capable of until you just go out and do it. Just studying for it, all the different phases for the testing, I was definitely a little like, oh my gosh, can I do it? But once you do it, you study, you get comfortable with it, get comfortable with the vehicle. It turned out very well. It was very, I would say, competitive. JTA officials say having a team of certified staffers to operate autonomous vehicles will be a benefit to both the community and transit users throughout the city. Now that we have a team of um, individuals that can operate the vehicle, it allows us to be more agile, to be able to go to different locations and be able to deploy the team to do deployments you know, in and around the Jacksonville area. In Jacksonville, Eugene Lindsay, JTA, Making Moves. We have a lot more to come on this edition of Making Moves, including where the next round of roadway improvement projects will go and when construction will start. We'll introduce you to the people who are responsible for keeping JTA's brand new transit center looking brand new and operating smoothly. Then find out why the Rosa Parks Transit Station is now sitting behind a fence. Those stories and more when Making Move continues. Here are AARP top tips on caregiver preparedness during coronavirus. Form a team that can help with caregiving tasks. Take an inventory of essential supplies in your loved one's home. Make a list of the care recipient's medications. Schedule regular calls to fight isolation. Finally, take care of yourself too. Follow the Centers for Disease Control's guidelines for coronavirus safety. For more caregiving tips, go to aarp.org slash caregiving. Of questions about the coronavirus? I'm here to share some simple steps you can take to help protect yourself and others. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Wash your hands often with soap and water for 20 plus seconds. Cover your cough or sneeze with a tissue. Clean and disinfect surfaces and objects. Wash hands after touching commonly used items. Together, we can help slow the spread. The projections would be blood next Thursday. I can't do Thursday, but I can do Friday. Disasters don't plan ahead. You can. Talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency. Welcome back to Making Moves. The autonomous vehicle technology JTA is pursuing is remarkable and will be fascinating to watch it develop. But long before JTA started thinking about AVs or even buses for that matter, it was planning, designing, and building roads and bridges in Jacksonville. The most recent example was Kernan Boulevard, which just opened about a month ago, months early and under budget. The construction pipeline is still wide open and several more projects are getting ready for construction, perhaps one in your neighborhood. With the Kernan Road project now wrapped up early, only Collins Road in Southwest Jacksonville remains under construction. Expanding Collins has been underway for the past two years, with one year to go before it is all complete. The roadway is being expanded from two lanes to four. These improvements will drastically uh, increase and improve the traffic capacity uh, and traffic conditions on, uh, on Collins Road. And also for our cyclists in the area, we'll have dedicated and safe bike lanes for them to uh, go back and forth. Project manager Will Wright says Collins is getting the total package which includes new sidewalks, grass median, bike lanes, closed drainage, and new lighting. While the work on Collins continues, several new projects are getting ready to start, including a project in Arlington with a first-of-its-kind design in North America. JTA is planning a turbo roundabout for the University and Merrill Interchange Improvement Project. And while turbo may imply speed in the automotive world, here... 
Turbo means something completely different. Turbo implies not speed, but efficiency in this case. So we can take the same amount of traffic volume and move it through that area at a slower speed, but get the same amount of traffic through it and therefore greatly improve the safety there at the main entrance of JU. San Pablo in the intercoastal west area of Jacksonville needs some major traffic relief. This mostly two-lane road has an average daily vehicle count of 22,000 in just one two-mile stretch. And so widening it and um, putting in um, turn lanes, new turn lanes, putting in um, pedestrian um, safety equipment around the schools, um, that is all the right things to do for that community. And while it will get new sidewalks and other pedestrian safety features, Angie Williams says the lack of right-of-way on San Pablo will not allow a multi-use path similar to what was delivered on Kernan. But another issue that arose during a public meeting got Williams' attention and was able to get mitigated even before construction starts. There are some elderly um, neighbors who had trees growing right at the fence line forever. And we were able to meander some of the work where we actually saved those trees. That attention to detail and problem solving initiative has been at the heart of this team of planners, architects and engineers since the very beginning, 65 years ago. Over the years, the JTA construction team has built just about every construction related thing you could imagine. Uh, we've built a tremendous number of projects over the years, all different types of projects. Uh, from smaller bus stop improvements, sidewalk projects, all the way up to and including J. Turner Butler Boulevard and the Dane Point Bridge. Uh, so there's, there's been a lot of variety in the projects we've done and a long history that continues today. But perhaps none as interesting, intricate, or important as the new Jacksonville Regional Transportation Center at La Villa. It started with the challenge associated with building a five-story, 60,000 square foot structure around what was once the Convention Center Skyway Station. Now you're building an enclosure around an existing structure, so obviously we don't want to have a debacle where the train doesn't fit through the hole or anything like that, because there's no standard detail for what we did. The visual of the trains driving directly into the building and the curved glass curtain wall front helped transform the JRTC into one of the most unique buildings in Northeast Florida. But that curved wall of glass is not actually what you think. While it looks curved, it's actually segmented. Um, but when you put enough pieces of it together and as large as the radius is, it gives the appearance of a curved building. While the JRTC is now open to customers, the remaining JTA Mobility Works roadway projects are nearly ready for construction to start. Alta Drive near Jacksport, McDuff Avenue and 5th Street, and Paramore Road near the new Costco at Collins Road and I-295 will all be seeing action soon. JTA will also continue to add new sidewalks throughout the city as funding becomes available. And in Mayport, over the past three years, JTA has pumped over $26 million in improvements into the beloved St. John's River Ferry. Now, armed with a new $6.5 million grant from the FTA, the ferry will get even more upgrades, including new restrooms, at both of the ferry landings. We have the next phase of the ferry capital improvements. Uh, that will include site improvements as well as restroom facilities. So that's going to create a, a great enhancement for the customers of our St. John's River Ferry. These future projects all have one thing in common, more and better mobility options for the citizens who use them. It's about mobility, it's what gets people to school, it's what gets people to their jobs, and we have to realize they all have different modes, and um, that's kind of going to be our next focus. It's going to be fun. The new Jacksonville Regional Transportation Center at La Villa is a nearly five-acre complex with 20 bus bays, lots of new technology, and a five-story, 67,000-square-foot headquarters building for the authority. Making Moose correspondent Karen Adams introduces us to the people who now have the massive responsibility of keeping this facility looking new and running smooth. 
JTA's brand new facility is off to a great start. The JRTC is a gleaming new state-of-the-art transportation hub at the western entrance to downtown Jacksonville, directly across from the Prime Osborne Convention Center. Along with the new JTA Administrative Headquarters building, the JRTC also serves as the city's main bus hub with fixed route, First Coast Flyer, the Skyway, regional shuttles, ride share, paratransit, and other state-of-the-art connectivity modes. It's been two months since JTA opened the bus terminal to customers, primarily to provide transportation to essential workers during the COVID-19 pandemic. Although the terminal is not yet operating at full capacity, the authority is getting a real-time preview of the demands to keep the JRTC running smoothly, as well as cleaned and maintained. Johnny Hallman is JTA's facilities manager and has been part of the planning team since the beginning. He says the initial response has been very positive. I'm hearing positive comments. I am. Uh, folks like the new facility. Uh, you know, they, they seem to enjoy the focus, everyone being here. The customer service is excellent. The team has rolled out and, and shown up in force. So no one has to wonder about what they do, which could be a concern for folks coming to a new facility, not knowing which bay. So I've been able to help several of them and they're very appreciative. And from what I'm getting is positive feedback. JRTC replaces the old Rosa Parks facility downtown and at full capacity can service up to 42,000 riders a day. That's three times the number of the Rosa Parks transit station it replaced. Bonnie Todd is the new chief operations officer. Todd arrived from Sound Transit in Seattle just weeks before the JRTC opened, and she oversees all facets of JTA's transportation network. It's very exciting. Um, I can see a lot of pride. I've only been here on the payroll for about six weeks, and I'm proud, so I can't imagine how much pride everybody else feels. Um, it's a beautiful facility, and it's in great shape. And I'm very hopeful that we'll, you know, if we don't already have plans in place, we'll immediately put them in place to make sure that we keep the facility looking as nice as it is, but it's very exciting. While Bonnie Todd is brand new to JTA, Sherman Rothwell has seen it all in his 30 years at JTA. First as a bus operator, then the Rosa Parks station manager, and now the man responsible for managing customer expectations at the JRTC. He says this is a huge improvement over the old Rosa Parks facility. Well, the difference that I see being here since May 4th is the, the ease of the traffic and the, uh, the convenience for the customer. You know, it, it's just a tremendous amount of, of new efficiencies, new amenities uh, for the customers here, for our customers. Some of those amenities include kiosk touchscreens and real-time information that is accessible to all customers, making their commuting experience state-of-the-art. If a customer does have a question, they can simply walk up to a JTA employee wearing a red vest. Those are the designated helpers to point people in the right direction should they have any questions. But the real question is, how do the customers feel about it? Well, they couldn't be any happier. Well, customers are loving it. You know, they are glad to be in a new facility. They like the ease of the customer lounge, uh, all the amenities that we have here, the new restroom facilities. You know, customers are loving it here, and we're welcoming them home every day. Now that the JRTC is open, the real work begins for Hallman and his crew, keeping this five-acre property with a five-story office building and a 20-bay bus terminal clean and maintained is no easy challenge, especially with thousands of customers and staff here nearly around the clock. Rosa Parks was minimal compared to this facility. Uh, obviously, having a five-story building brings a whole new set of challenges. Maintenance is a large part, and if you don't plan on maintenance from the beginning, then you have situations that can be very costly. There's no doubt that keeping this $57 million complex pristine will be no easy feat. But Bonnie Todd, Johnny Hallman, and Sherman Rothwell all say that they're up for the challenge. At the JRTC in La Villa, Karen Adams, JTA Making Moves. JTA's transit center for the previous 26 years, the Rosa Parks Transit Station is now being readied for a new and improved future. While the western portion of Rosa will continue to receive bus routes, including the First Coast Flyer Red Line each day, the eastern portion of the facility is now behind a fence. 
The JTA is hoping to start demolition in the near future of the eastern section in preparation for its sale. JTA is openly marketing the property for development. The authority is seeking to partner with developers wanting to enhance the livability around the Rosa Park station and several other of its parcels in what some call transit-based urbanism. The benefits of tying transit to urban development allows residents to live, work and play in the same area, revitalize urban neighborhoods, reduce the dependence on driving and improve the environment, to name just a few. JTA launched a marketing campaign for its available parcels in a special forum last year and has continued its discussions with developers both here in Northeast Florida and beyond. When we come back, the COVID-19 pandemic has forced thousands of local citizens to look for new jobs. Coming up, we'll see how JTA's community outreach program is helping them get ready. How do you protect yourself and others from coronavirus? Avoid touching your eyes, your nose, and your mouth. Wash your hands often with soap and water for 20 plus seconds. Clean and disinfect surfaces and objects. Together, we can help slow the spread. Welcome back to Making Moves. The COVID-19 pandemic has forced thousands of local citizens to look for new jobs. That means job interviews for which they may not have proper attire. That's where JTA Cares, the authority's community outreach program, steps in. Over the past two years, JTA Cares has opened both men's and women's career closet to help people get a new outfit for a job interview or close to start a new job. The need is great and the response, well, has been overwhelming. To have a place where you can walk in, pick out what you need, not have the pressures of getting ready for that interview has proven to be a huge benefit and success to our people and they've been grateful to have it and it's even worked out for simple pleasures like going to church. So our career closet uh, has been a success and we really appreciate this partnership. Due to the high demand, the career closets are both in need of replenishment. If you have new or slightly worn professional men's and women's clothing, including pants, dress shirts, women's skirts and blouses, along with polo shirts, work boots, khakis and other work attire, JTA Cares would love to have them for the career closet. If you'd like to contribute and help a fellow citizen score that new job, I know it would be appreciated. Here's how to do it. Send an email to Alicia Batson at JTA Cares. Her email address is abatson at jtafla.com. She will arrange a pickup or drop off. And remember, your donation is tax deductible. And that wraps up this edition of Making Moves. We thank you for spending some time with us to find out what's going on in your community. We welcome you to check out our YouTube channel where you can watch past episodes and stories at your leisure. A direct link to our page is available on jtafla.com. You can also find stories and other exclusive content when you like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash JTA Making Moves. For the entire Making Moves team, I'm Bill Milnes. Thanks for watching and go out there and do something nice for somebody today.